In this video, I will show you how you can obtain comparative static results from an optimization problem using the implicit function theorem. Let's start with a simple maximization problem. Let's maximize with respect to x1 and x2 the square root of x1 x2 such that p1 x1 plus p2 x2 is equal to m. So a simple consumer maximization problem. Now we can write down our Lagrangian. L is equal to the square root of x1 x2 minus lambda p1 x1 plus p2 x2 minus m. And we have our Lagrangian. So let's do the first order conditions and let's start with lambda. Now, with respect to lambda is equal to minus p1 x1 minus p2 x2 plus m. Note that there's a negative sign here, so you need to have the negative sign down here too. Otherwise, you will have issues with the second order condition. Then, with respect to x1, it's simply 1 over 2 x1 to the minus 1 half x2 to the 1 half minus lambda p1 equals 0 and respect to x2 is simply 1 over 2 x1 to the 1 half x2 to the minus 1 half minus lambda p2 equals 0. So we have our three first order conditions. Now we could solve these three equations for x1, x2 and lambda to obtain our unique solution and then take the derivative of that solution with respect to the parameter which we are interested in to obtain a comparative static result. However, there are cases where we cannot solve the system of equations and we actually still want a comparative static result. In these cases, there is the implicit function theorem that allows us to solve the system of equations. So let's here apply this implicit function theorem, which tells us to first differentiate all three equations or all the first order conditions we have with respect to all variables, all endogenous variables and exogenous variables, and then set up the system in matrix form and use Kramer's rule to solve that system. Okay, so let's start with the total differentiation. Let me erase that and make some space. Okay, if we take the first equation, we have 0 is equal to first x1, so minus p1 dx1 minus p2 dx2. There's no lambda in it, so we can go straight to p1 and p2. So we have minus x1 d p1 minus x2 d p2 and plus dn equals 0. That's make that m a bit nicer. Okay. The second one with x, 0 is equal to, differentiating with x gives us minus 1 over 4, x1 to the minus 3 halves, x2 to the 1 half, dx1 plus 1 over 4, x1, x2 goes to the minus 1 half, dx2 minus p1 d lambda minus lambda d p1 equals 0. And the third one, 0 is equal to 1 over 4 x1 x2 to the minus 1 half dx1 minus 1 over 4 x1 to the 1 half x2 to the minus 3 halves dx2 minus p2 d lambda and minus lambda p2 equals 0. Okay, now we have totally differentiated these equations, so we need to put it in matrix form. So let me erase the first order conditions we just have to make some space for the matrix form. Okay. So what we want to have is we want to have a matrix to the left, then the vector of the endogenous variables, which is then multiplied by this matrix and equal 
to some vector of all the only exogenous variables. Okay, so let's start setting up this matrix. And we put lambda to the far left, x1 in the middle, and x2 to the right of this matrix. So the first equation is respect to lambda, so we get 0 on top, then we get minus p1 and minus p2 on the first um, column. In the second column, we get in the middle part minus 1 over 4, x1 to the minus 3 halves, x2 to the 1 half. At the bottom, we get 1 over 4, x1, x2 to the minus 1 half. And on top, we just get minus p1 by symmetry. Then on the right hand side, in the bottom, we get minus 1 over 4, x1 to the 1 half, x2 to the minus 3 halves, 1 over 4 in the middle, or x1, x2 to the minus 1 half, and on top, minus p2. And we have our matrix. This matrix happens to be the, hit, the bordered Hessian of the optimization problem as well. Okay, so we can put on a vector here. We just have d lambda, dx1, and dx2. Now we can write down the vector to the right-hand side by taking all the exogenous variables here, put them on the right-hand side so their sign switches, and writing down in this matrix. So the first element will be x1, dp1, plus x2 dp2 minus dm. Then we have in the middle one only minus lambda, so it will be plus lambda dp1, and in the bottom lambda dp2, which completes our system of equations. Okay, if we now want to employ Cramer's rule, the first thing we need is we need to make sure the determinant of this matrix, which we call the Jacobian in comparative statics or Hessian in uh, normal maximization, we need to show that the determinant of this is not zero and we need it to find the comparative statics. So let me erase everything on the top to write down this Hessian. Okay. So the determinant of this Hessian is simply the falling diagonals minus the raising diagonals. So let's start with this diagonal here, this times this times this, which happens to be equal to this times this times this. So we simply left with P1, P2 over 2, X1, X2 to the minus 1 half. Okay? So that's the sum of the falling diagonals. So we need to have the raising diagonals. Now the main one has to be minus sign, so it happens to be actually plus. So we get p2 squared over 4, x1 to the minus 3 halves, x2 to the 1 half. This is this diagonal. Then we know that this times this times this is 0. Then we've left with this times this times this. Again, 3 minus sign, so it's also positive. Plus p1 squared over 4, and x one to the one half, x two to the minus three halves. Okay. Now, since we assume that p one, p two, x one, x two, m, and lambda all are positive, we know this expression is strictly greater than zero since we're summing up positive terms. Okay. So to find the comparative static results for two cases, I will go through. Let me first make some space. So I erase this, but I make sure that there's still the greater than zero. And we will calculate the following comparative statics, dx1 over dm and dx1 over dp2. So since this is a simple utility maximization problem with a budget constraint, we will have how does the consumption of good one change if income changes, and how does the consumption of good one change if the price of good two 
changes. Okay, now before we can actually calculate this comparative static results, we need to find out uh, which vector we need to replace in this matrix and with what. Okay, since we want dm here, we said dp1 and dp2 equal to zero, which yields the vector to the right of minus dm, zero, and zero. Okay, but we don't want d lambda dx1 and dx2, we want dx1 over dm. So let's divide it through dm, and we're left with the vector minus one, zero, and zero. To repeat up here. So we have minus one, zero, and zero. This is our vector. If we do the same with P2, what we get is, so P2, here we have an X2, here we have zero, and here we have lambda. X2, zero, and lambda. Okay, now you want the comparative statics with respect to X1, which means the middle column here. So let's start with the top one. What we need to find is the determinant of this matrix with the middle column replaced by this vector. Um, so let's calculate that determinant. Okay, following diagonals, so this one is zero, this one is zero, we're left with only this times this times this, but this is a minus one. So we're simply left with P2 over four, x1, x2, to the minus one half, right? Now the raising diagonals, the main one is zero, this one is zero, so it's this times this times this, which is three negative signs, right? So it's plus P1 over four, x1 to the one half, x2 to the minus three halves. get the actual comparative size, we now need to divide that by the determinant of the Hessian, and we will find that this was positive by what we just found. This is a positive term, this is a positive term, so this is positive. So if income increases, given the utility function we had at the beginning, we will increase consumption of good one. Okay, let's do the same with the price of good two. So we replace this column by this vector. Now falling diagonals, the main one is zero. This one will be minus P1, lambda, minus P2. So the two minus sign make it positive, and we're left with P1, P2, lambda. Then the one with x2 here, this times this times this. Note that there's only one negative sign here now, so it's minus and we get x2, p2 over 4, x1, x2 to the minus 1 half, okay? And the last term will be the raising diagonals. So since this diagonal is zero and this main diagonal is zero, so we're left with this times x2 times this. And since this is positive, it will be negative, so minus p1, x2 2 over 4, x1 to the 1 half, x2 to the minus 3 halves, over the determinant of the Hessian. Okay, now we have this term. So again, p1, p2, lambda, x1, x2, and m are all positive. So we have positive term here, positive term here, and positive term here, but we subtract two positive terms from a positive term. So we don't know if this expression is greater or less than zero. Note that even if we have explicit numbers for P1, P2, and M, we still get for some x's this to be positive or negative. So we cannot say if the price of good two would increase, if then consumption of good one would increase or decrease. Thank you for watching.